Hello out there all you keen geographers and welcome to another how-to video. In this video I'll be showing you how to upload your own data to ArcGIS to make some pretty funky and interesting maps that are going to get you good marks in IA2 and IA3. So to begin um, you need an account with ArcGIS so I'm just signed in on my account here and the first thing I'm going to do is click on map up here. And it's going to take you to the map viewer. Um, and you can make representations of data on this viewer. Um, however, I'm going to immediately press on open in map viewer classic um, because it's going to give me a scale. And I need to make sure that if I'm making a map, it has bolts. So, of course, I need a scale. And here's my scale here. Um, so that's handy to begin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click uh, add and then I'm going to go add layer from file. So the data I'll be adding is from our data sets here. Shout out to the Year 12 Geography class of 2024. This is our data that we collected on uh, mangroves when we went to the Port of Brisbane. Um, so I've got my line data. So we collected data every 150 metres along a transect line. Um, and then we collected some data in some quadrats. We did as well. So we have two files that we can upload. So this is what they look like. You can see they've all got different headings um, based on the actual data um, that we collected. Um, so we can use any of this data um, in ArcGIS. And the reason our files look like this is because we used uh, Survey123, which is an app um, that is common. Um, you can download it very easily. Uh, and it's on, uh, and we use waterproof iPads essentially to collect this data. So I guess using Survey123 has allowed us to set this up really, really easily. Um, so I'm just going to go back in here. I'm going to go choose file. Um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be using this file here. So I'm going to look at some of our line data, uh, which is this file here. Um, so I can use any of this data in this file. Um, so I'm just going to click on open. I'm going to click on import layer. And it's because we had GPS coordinates while we were collecting our data, um, it's going to take us exactly to where we were. So we were on the Port of Brisbane. We're in this mangrove forest here. Um, the data it's immediately displaying is distance. So we, as I said, we collected data for 150 meters along this line here. Um, so that, that's why it's come up with distance. So we have all these headings here and they are the same headings um, that are along the top here. Um, but of course, measuring distance isn't really gonna give us anything to analyze in a figure. Um, so let's say for instance, I wanna go height of dominant mangrove species. And again, I can look at my own data here um, to know that the dominant mangrove species uh, was Abyssinia marina, which is the grey mangrove, right? Um, so we want the height of that. Um, so we can track the height of the mangroves. Um, it's currently set on a like a proportional symbol. Um, so the bigger the circle, the taller the mangrove. Uh, but that's that's not really maybe the best way to display the data. So if I scroll down in this menu here, um, I can either select count, uh, counts and amounts or I can do heat map. Um, you can do like different unique symbols for different heights, but I think maybe this way, I wanna do a heat map, for example. So already I can see that the uh, taller mangroves, the taller gray mangroves were closer to the water um, and the shorter ones were further away. So that's already a trend uh, I can see in that. Um, and again, you can change this um, any way you might like, but um, I think heat map is the best for this data. Um, again, there's like really good other data as well. So we can really do any of these headings from our Excel spreadsheet. Um, we can even do like the dominant mangrove species just in general. Um, so we can actually see that the Abyssinia marina was actually the most dominant species we observed along the line here. Um, let's go with this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna take a snip of my map. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So I want to, let's just take a snip here, like so. And then I'm going to put that uh, just on a paint file, just like this. And then I will just adjust this paint file like so, so I can still have like a key in the bottom here. Uh, I'm going to start off by clicking on this square here and I'm going to make a, a nice sort of even space for my legend. So I'm going to start off by making a heading that says legend. Um, and 
this survey one two three and ArcGIS have made this really easy for me. Um, so all I have to do is click here, and I've got my scale ready. Oh, sorry, my legend ready to go. So I'm just going to copy that like so. Let me chuck that in here, and there I've got my legend already set up. There, ready to go. Um, so keeping in line with bolts, um, I'm going to need an orientation. Um, so which direction is north? Um, that's pretty easy. So I'm just going to select this area here. Um, doesn't have to be that big. Might not select that area because it's got roads there, which is significant because that's a type of land cover. Um, Microsoft Paint now has layers. So I'm just going to fill in um, that layer there, just with white. I'm going to select black again. I want a nice border around my orientation where it's going to go. So I'm going to put that there. Um, and then I want to have an arrow pointing north. So I'm going to just select the up arrow here, like so. I might make that a bit thinner just so it looks a bit neater. Um, and I just want to have an end for north, which is going to go in here. Look nice and even. Cool. Okay, so now I have my, or well, part of my legend, um, and I have part of, oh, I had definitely have my orientation as well. Um, to further complement my legend, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click or select this area here. I'm just going to press Control um, C and Control V to paste it. Um, I would like to move it if I can. There we go. Down into my legend. And I might make it a bit smaller just so it looks more similar to my other ones here. And then I want to zoom out again. I want to select an area here. So I'm going to click Control C and Control V. Again, selecting it, moving it here. I want it to be the same size as well, just so everything looks pretty even. So I'm going to do it like that. So they're the same size. I'll put that there. Uh, and then I've got water as well. So I'll do this. Zoom in so I can drag it. Clicking and dragging here. So that's about the same size. So I'll put that down. So they're looking pretty even, pretty similar size. So I'll um, just go back to my typing function. I probably want it to be a little bit smaller. How's that going to look? So we've got mangrove. Be a bit smaller. We've got the mangrove forest there. Here we have an urban land cover type. So I'll just put that there. Cool. And here we have the port of Brisbane. there cool so my legend is coming together a bit more now i also have these roads here i could include that as well um so let's say i'm finished with this now actually i can't be because i haven't done a scale um so i want to get rid of this and i can see i've got my scale um in the bottom right hand corner here um so i just need to be on the same uh distance that i took the snip from um i'm just going to scroll into the mangrove forest here and then i'm going to take a snip of the scale so I've got a 60 meter scale. So I just go under here and go copy. And then I want to go back to my paint file. I want to zoom out, I want to select, then paste it on there just using control V and control C. And you can see I can line it up pretty nicely. So that scale fits in that, that mangrove forest pretty easily there. So I have my legend, I have my scale, I have my orientation. I just need uh, the rest of bolts now. So I'm going to put it in my Word document. It's going to be the easiest way to go now. So I'm going to go select all and then go Control V. So open up a Word doc here. And then I'll just press Control V to paste that. And then I might just make it smaller for the purpose of this video. Um, and this is already a great figure to analyze as well because I can see the dominant mangrove species is closer to the water and I can see some new species in here. Um, the height would be really good to analyze as well. Anyway, putting a border around it, I'm just going to go on picture format, picture border, and to put a border around it. 
And then I'm going to, of course, have to give it a name. So I'm going to call this figure one and say it's the first um, figure in my assignment. And I need to put down the source here. And the source is obviously going to be me because I collected this data myself with my class. Uh, so you can put your own surname if it's your own data. Um, and then I'm going to go spatial distribution of mangrove species at data collection site one. I can even make the number. I'm just going to highlight it all and uh, just go remove spacing to make it a bit neater and a bit closer together. So guys, that is how you use your own data um, to make a representation of it on ArcGIS. So just make sure um, you're on the classic map uh, view here um, so you can get your scale. And then it really just depends on how your uh, Survey123 app is set up and what data you're collecting. Um, and just make sure you're uploading a, a CSV file as well. So I could really make data from any of these headings here because of the way we set up the app. So good luck with your IAs and I'm sure you'll be smash it. Get to now you can, now that you've made your figure, you can use the TJE paragraph structure to help you analyze your figure. So TJE being trend, justify, and explain. So if I look at my figure here, I can see my trend is that the dominant species is Abyssinia marina. So then I go back to the TJE structure. I might just talk about that in my opening sentence. And then I wanna justify it using data from my actual figure. And then I might wanna explain the processes or the reasons behind that. So once again, good luck in your IAs guys. And remember to achieve in these tasks, you need to make good quality figures and ArcGIS is a good way to do that and then make sure you analyze them effectively as well.